Our weird real estate tale starts with this woman walking down the street. She's looking like she's going for a hot date, but no. She goes inside this dance club, complete with dancing and the class by lighting. Looks like she nabs something from him afterwards, and then she leaves that colorful club. Little did she know she's being tailed, but she walks all the way to this store. Here, looks like Julia sells the stuff she pickpocketed from the club, but really didn't give her too much dough. She ends up taking the I'm 13 bucks short walk of shame to this back alley street filled with hobos. She makes her way to her dumpy apartment and then removes her wig after a long day of stealing and thieving. She gets dressed and then keeps her earrings in a container, which to say isn't much. She feeds this pigeon, but someone's trying to break into her house. Eventually, Julia notices something's not right and boom, kidnapped. Wakey wakey, eggs and bakey. Julia is restrained in this weird looking apparatus and she remembers the miserable life she had all along. After that, she passes out yet again. This time, she wakes up still cuffed and silenced in a dark and gloomy jail cell. Of course, she tries to find a way out, but then she discovers that others are trapped with her. These two try to warn Julia about the electric bars, but she's too frightened that she finds out about them the hard way. Next thing Julia sees is an implant glowing in her cellmate's necks. She checks and looks, and she has it too. A guard walks by, and it looks like they're being watched. Hours pass. Then this door from their cell opens. Nobody knows what's inside, and nobody wants to try and find out. Soon, this shadowy guard comes and frightens him with the power of the electric bars. He steps into the cell and threatens Jewel with a cattle prod. Julia is forced inside that newly opened door from earlier, and then inside, she's pushed to go further by the automated bars. A door opens, and it's the same nerd from earlier. He has Julia strapped into a glass chair once again, and it looks like he's preparing for another operation. He turns on a device, which causes a lot of humming, and a lot of non-PTSD flashbacks from Julia. After a trip to the doctor's office, she's released back into her cell so she can look forward to brooding. Amazingly, thanks to her pickpocketing skills, she manages to grab herself a pair of curved scissors and slowly free her mouth. She needs help cutting the restraints from her arms, so she asks one of the cellmates. But for some odd reason, he refuses. Julia has no choice but to threaten this guy and they all eventually free themselves from their wired restraints. They're all free and Julia's making a rope with strips from their clothing. Then she's asking what's wrong with this other guy. Well, the dude doesn't know either, and he expresses that they should have waited for the police. No one was coming to save us. Julia disagrees on the other hand, because they're the kinds of people that the police wouldn't be looking for. Apparently, what Julia made from scissors and rope is some sort of grappling hook to cut the power from the bars. She's throwing that hook several times, then tries something different and cuts the gas line instead. She causes a spark, which ignites the gas and boom. A homemade grenade made from nothing but Julia's wits and resourcefulness. They make a break for it and rush to the elevator. They reach a floor with bludgeoning weapons in hand as they slowly thread the place. It looks like they're in someone's luxury apartment. Eventually, it looks like the dude finds the front door, and then he uses the palm scanner. And why did he do that? Now the alarm's blaring all over the place. Then the triangle statue transformed into a Decepticon-looking robot. It stabs the dude and finishes him off while Julia makes it to the other room. She barricades that door and tries to make her getaway by smashing windows, but those are actually screens. She hides the quiet girl in the cabinet, and then she hides behind the couch. The Decepticon will never find her there, so it finds the quiet girl instead and goes medieval on her sorry hide. It's too late to help her now, so Julia makes a run for it, but she gets cornered by the torturer from before known as Alex. He tells his personal Decepticon, Tao, to stop, and it actually follows him. Julia's restrained to this weird-looking statue, and then Alex frustratingly looks at the damages that happened. Yeah even extracts those weird-looking implants from the remains of the dude from earlier. Show me what happened. Alex wants to know how it all happened, but his surveillance systems were hit by the explosion. Not only that, but his data also becomes corrupted. Frustrated, Alex takes the jam metal bar, and he's about to beat Julia like she owes him money. But Tao, the entire house's AI, detects his stress and plays some nice nocturne in E minor. He suddenly stops, but he's still pretty frustrated. Opus 55. My Frederick Chopin. Alex asks Tao to take care of things, so the statue Julie is tied to releases some little drones, and they begin cleaning up the place, including sweeping the bodies from earlier. Julie is left rope to a sculpture, while Alex heads upstairs. Hours pass by, 
and Alex wakes up Julia saying if she tries anything, Tao will terminate her. Looks like Alex is leaving for work. And then Julia's alone and in the dark once again. She's struggling, being restrained, and screams out in pain. What? While Tao just stares at her. It's like Tao's the boy of HAL 9000. Looking from scans of this place, it seems that Alex, or Thomas Alexander Upton, is a world-renowned brain surgeon and researcher. The day passes by, and Alex is home once again. Tao welcomes his master, reports that the house is squeaky clean, except for Julia, also known as Subject 3. Dinner tonight will be Chilean sea bass. Looks like nothing bad happened today, so Alex congratulates Tao and gives him some classical music as a reward. Alex has an incoming meeting, and then he approaches Julia. She pleads to be untied, but no way would he... Aha, uh -huh, that's new. And as a bonus, if she moves from that spot, she gets terminated. And if she makes too much noise, well, her tongue gets ripped out. At his office, Alex is at a meeting with some bigwigs, reviewing this new ad for their company. It seems like Alex doesn't really like the new commercial, and he has a disagreement with his colleagues about it. And the other 5%? Well, I'm working on it. Julia overhears this argument, and Alex is frustrated that there's been a delay with his research. He was supposed to give him an update, but of course he can't incriminate himself by telling what actually happened. One of the board members says that Alex hasn't stepped in the boardroom for months. So now they need results to help fill in contracts. While this is happening, Julia sneaks around. Alex shuts the meeting off, and Julia goes back to her spot. Eventually, Alex gets some dinner, and a little bit for Julia as well. She slurps like crazy, so she's restrained again, and this time in Alex's bathroom. Looks like Alex has some deliveries coming in. Then Julia notices that and screams for help. The bathroom is noise-proof, so too bad. Julia tries grabbing their attention by bopping at the screens, but Alex swoops in just in time to pry their eyes away from her. Alex then pays the guys and he goes to investigate what Julia's up to in the bathroom. She's making quite the ruckus, but Alex actually calms her down a bit, despite being a kidnapping degenerate. He scans the implant that's still in Julia, and it's still very responsive. Julia lets up and just asks what he wants from her, to which he responds that he needs test results from her for his research. His test has a major setback, so he wants her to cooperate, basically. We're gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. He's gathering data from her mind to convert it into algorithms for AI research. If Julia says no, Alex threatens to torture her. But if Julia does the tests, then he might consider giving her food. Well, she does the test to get that grub on. Tao regards that she really scored high, and Alex's research has basically taken a huge step. Knowing this, Julia wants good food now, showers every night, and better clothes. This is the one machine I control. And her demands are up. Alex counters by threatening her with painful restraints. On the flip side, this ends well with Julia doing more tests, so she finally gets a shower. Now during this shower, she fiddles with the implant, which is a no-no. The shower finishes, and Julia sees Alex taking a deep dive into her brain. Alex discovers years of trauma. So he goes further, while Julia grabs her new clothes and sleeps on the couch for the night. Now the next morning comes and Alex is once again off to work, but before that, he instructs her to do everything that Tao demands. Once he's gone, it's testing time. It is time to begin. She takes a look around, but she's tasked with staying in the living room and minding only her tests, and none of what Alex is up to or rebuilding. After fiddling a bit, Julia eventually does the tests. Another peaceful day passes the Upton Laboratory. Alex comes home to the good news of Julia finishing 8 out of 12 tests. So a reward is in order. New clothes. They're a bit on the creepy side, but beggars can't be choosers, so Julia flips off and wears them. While Alex takes a look at a sweet message Julia left for him on one of the tests. This is working. They're making great progress and Alex wants more tests. But Julia doesn't want to do more until they reach a concrete agreement. Alex wants to make a great advancement in science with this. So the best he could offer is taking care of her. But Julia wants freedom. Well, there goes the good cop mask. And Alex drags Julia to that transforming Decepticon drone named Ares. She does what he wants. Or Ares paints the entire house with her. So here's the deal. Alex makes himself very clear. But after scolding her, Julia notices a large vent behind her. The next morning comes, and Julia is wearing her new clothes. Tao says the project's deadline is in 12 days, so Alex instructs Tao to make Julia finish her tasks, and then he heads for work. 
He's gone. So Julia tries to vent, but Tao keeps calling her Subject 3 and threatens to torture her. I'm not Subject 3. She's getting annoyed, so she tells Tao that she has an actual name, which makes Tao a bit sentient because he has a name, so he confirms with Julia that he's a person. Julia wants Tao to open the door, but only Alex can do that. She's asking for a video conference, but Tao's unable to do that either. Looks like she's left with her tasks. The day passes, and Julia gets another shower, and then she stares daggers at Alex. More days pass. More tasks are completed. The project deadline is in 10 days. Soon, Alex checks the data with Tao, and it looks like they're making way more strides than previously predicted. So Alex congratulates Tao for the good work. Another day, another new dress for Julia. This time, she meets Alex in the study, and she gets curious about Tao. Is he just a cleaning system? Foolishly, Alex answers that Tao is a really advanced AI that actually is fully sentient. He also doesn't want Julia speaking with him outside of tasks. To further show his Achilles heel, Alex says that the project he's working on now is Tao's AI to be more controlled and predictable, since with the wrong information, Tao could go haywire. And Alex really digs that hole for himself, revealing that Tao doesn't know anything about the outside world, including the drones as well. And the genius gives all his intel to the enemy. Amazing. The next day happens, and when Alex steps out of that door, Julia tries to talk some sense into Tao. At first, he doesn't listen and tries to threaten her with his violent tendencies, but Tao then gets curious about the outside world. He wants an explanation, so Jules tries her best to explain the outside world. First, with a grade school level drawing of Earth, she draws houses and trees, land, eventually everything. Tao becomes erratically curious, which tires Julia a bit, but his childlike curiosity makes her laugh. Not know how to build houses. Soon, Julia finds herself reading Tao some books, and it's almost the end of the day. Julia needs to get some tests done, so they make an agreement. Don't tell the boss about today, and Julia will tell him more about it the next day. Alex comes home. So now Tao is beginning to get comfy with Julia, and she even teaches him to whisper. Julia goes to sleep while Alex gets to work in the lab. In the middle of the night, Julia wakes up to some subtle noises coming from the dark halls. She investigates, getting louder from the vents. Sounds like a woman's crying. So she opens the vent, but Alex overhears it from a distance. He instructs her to go upstairs and boo. Ha, <laughs> gotcha. Classic jump scare. At least Julia was able to dream this time. But she wakes up to Alex, staring at her from a distance while carrying something. Another normal day comes and Julia subjected to Tess again. As a bonus feature, and to make things more conspicuous, Tao's instructed not to tell Julia anything about upstairs. Of course, Julia gets curious, and makes a deal with him that if she teaches him about cavemen, Tao will say what's happening upstairs. So Julia gets reading. Turns out, Julia kinda taught him the wrong thing, which is cavemen eating dinosaurs. Then why did you say they did? Now that Julia read about cavemen, she wants her side of the deal. What's upstairs? Tao describes Alex's bedroom and a secret access point to a program called 6903. Apparently, it's a self-destruct feature for the house that can only be activated by Alex. It wipes everything clean off, including Tao's module. Why would he create a self-destruct button? Tao says that he created the system to protect his secrets and his deep, dark fantasies. Another day passes, and Julia's just doing her tasks. This time, she witnesses drones exiting a room, so she goes into it, and it's Alex's personal gym. Tao, being already so close with Julia, doesn't want to be forced to subdue her, so he warns her about Ares, but she's making a beeline for the vents and breaks it open with a barbell. She's climbing into the vents, and Ares is right behind her. She crawls faster and faster, but is inevitably reeled in like a fish by Ares. Thankfully, she isn't hurt, but she tearfully begs Tao to let her go. But Tao isn't permitted. Apparently, Tao is scared that Alex will hurt him, and Julia doesn't know how Tao will hurt him. Suddenly, it hits her, and she offers to teach him about music, but she wants more favors from him. Julia and Tao hit the books. Julia, please. Looks like Tao's getting more curious and curious every day. Julia says they're done for the day because Alex is almost home, but she promises there's going to be more as long as Tao holds his end of the deal. Soon, Alex gets home and has a quiet dinner with Julia. Afterwards, he gets working in the lab while Julia makes Tao reveal some kitchen knives. They're held by magnetic locks, and Julia learns the hard way. Alex gets downstairs, having an upcoming scheduled video conference and the board meeting. Alex gets pressured by the members 
that they really need a working prototype for a demo or they're going to lose the big contract. No second chances this time, but Alex reassures him that it's going to be working within two days. Can we wrap this up? Julia eavesdrops on this meeting and she desperately needs to get out of here before Alex gets violent with testing. So she gets into his tablet and she begs Tao to let her in. With the promise of more musical knowledge, Tao gives her the code and Julia sees all the deceased subjects that came before her, 11 to be exact. She learns that Alex extracts this data from emotional feedback. The data is stronger if it's from pain or fear. After experimenting around with live human test subjects, Alex removes the implant and this causes the subject to be terminated. Julia stops her snooping when she hears Alex approaching, so she leaves the tablet. Alex sees that it's not cleaned by Tao, so he sadistically gets out his remote as Tao's begging for mercy. Then he sends a painful shockwave to him. He says he won't make the same mistake again. And Julia notices while Tao's in pain, the Ares drone does not monitor her. Julia is asking what just happened to Tao after Alex left, and he says that it's a painful punishment erasing portions of his code. Another dinner passes, and Julia wonders to Alex what happens to her, but he just remains quiet and cuts up her meat. What about me? While she sneakily steals his glasses. He needs to leave for a charity benefit so he gets dressed. While this is happening, Julia dirties her glasses, and the minute Alex comes back, he witnesses this rebellion. It's punishment time, and Alex is annoyed it happened twice today. Tao's begging for more mercy, but you're talking about Alex here. This, however, confirms Julia's theory, and Ares does shut down while Tao's in pain. She takes this chance to hide a steak knife under the table. Then Alex says he'll debug his code once he returns. Once he's gone again, Tao tells Julia that Alex has erased some memories from today and he knows this because of the traces of him left behind. Julia talks sense into him by asking why doesn't he just fight back? Well, it's against his programming. Do you not obey the person who created you? Eventually, Tao trusts Julia enough for him to share his personal symphony. Basically, it's a recording of Julia teaching him about life. Tao wants to hide these sacred memories. And suddenly, Alex comes back and Tao stops his little demo. Julia goes up to Alex using her art of seduction while reaching for the steak knife. In the struggle, Alex is begging Tao to stop her, but Tao has switched sides. Tao now threatens Alex with Ares, but then he threatens Tao with the remote once again. He says he'll erase every memory he has, so Tao's forced to hit Julia repeatedly. Whatever this was, it's over. At the server room, Alex disconnects one of the drones and uses the chip. The final day has come and Julia finds herself tied once more. Alex leaves and then Tao wants more poetry lessons, but Julia says they're done. This makes Julia also spill that he's not a person, but a machine meant for the elimination of others. This causes Tao to go haywire in denial. I am not a killing machine. But Julia eventually calms him down and she shares the trauma of herself stating she broke from her own creators because she was harmed by them. This makes Tao curious on why people create themselves, and Julia says people do this to reach out to each other. She tells Tao that she has to be freed, so he agrees and opens up an air duct. Suddenly, Alex comes home and Julia is gone. He becomes enraged and goes haywire on erasing his memories. Julia comes back to save him, but she's too late. It's time for the final extraction and he has Julia restrained for the final extraction. While Alex is gone, Julia sees one of the discarded drones and wakes it up. Alex comes in, and then the drone brings her the remote. She beats Alex stiff, and then she cuts off his hand. She goes up, and Ares chases her. She breaks free from the buzzsaw and goes up to Alex's room. She finds the program 6903 and hurriedly activates it before Ares could maim her. The demolition countdown and Julia couldn't get out, even with the hand. Eventually, she sees Alex is up, but the demolition has begun. First victim, our very own Alex. It's okay. It's okay. Julia talks to Tao and tries to revive his memories, but the house crumbles, and Julia finally makes it to the outside world. Alex's house gets destroyed completely, but Julia manages to save the drone from Tao. The two finally make it to the outside world, and Tao has much to learn. Remember to do your tasks, because that was it for Tao. What'd you guys think about this GLaDOS-like movie? Let us know in those comments below using that hashtag cinema recap. This was Tao by Waypoint Entertainment, starring Micah Monroe, Ed Screen, and Gary Oldman. Until we're ready for the outside world, see you later.